Well, praise God, everybody. Look, I'm so excited to be here today. Another day the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let's make our confession. Say, this is my Bible. No. Let's say, love never gives up. Love never gives up. Love cares more for others than for self. Love cares more for others than for self. Love doesn't want what it doesn't have. Love doesn't want what it doesn't have. Love doesn't strut. Love doesn't strut. Love doesn't have a swelled head. Love doesn't have a swelled head. Love doesn't force itself on others. Love doesn't force itself on others. Love isn't always me first. Love isn't always me first. Love doesn't fly off the handle. Love doesn't fly off the handle. Love doesn't keep score of the sins of others. Love doesn't revel when others grovel. Love takes pleasure in the flowering of truth. Love always protects. Love trusts God always. Love always looks for the best in others. Love never looks back. Love keeps going to the end. Let's say this. Say, I'm going all the way. I made up my mind. No turning back. No going back. No looking back. No, looking no back. I'm forging straight ahead. No, I'm forging straight ahead. Because, I'm because I'm stronger. I'm wiser. I'm, wiser. I'm, committed. I'm committed. I'm faithful. I'm faithful. And, I'm and I'm accountable. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Good morning and praise the Lord, everybody. We thank God so much that he's an awesome God. He's doing those great things. We thank you, pastors, this morning for our awesome service. Let's go to God in prayer. Right where you at, let's just go ahead and call on the name of Jesus. Let's go ahead and exalt him. Right where you at, make that a sanctuary. God, we exalt you. We thank you. You're a good God. God, we exalt you. We thank you. You're a good God. Jesus, we call on your name. God, we thank you that you can, you are good and you can only do good, God. God, we thank you that you love us. God, we thank you that your love for us is never failing, God. God, we thank you that you are uh, you're, have many grace and much grace and mercy for us, God. God, we thank you for today, God. We give you glory, God. God, we thank you for keeping us throughout the night, keeping us from safe and harm, safe harm and danger, God. God, we thank you for this time, God. God, we thank that we are faith walkers and faith talkers, that we are able to stand on your word. We're able to believe in your word. We're able to trust in your word like never before, God. We exalt your holy name, God. God, we thank that we have a spirit of peace. We have a spirit of courage, God that we are able to walk and trust in you, God. God, we know that in your hands, everything is okay, God. God, we think that you're in control and you'll never lose control. We give you glory and we give you praise, God. God, we thank you that we are able to be your ambassadors. We're able to share the gospel like never before. We're able to go out and tell our neighbors, our friends, our family, that you are a good God, that you're still doing good, that you still sit on the throne, that you're the same yesterday, today, and forever. God, we thank you that your love for us is never changing. We give you glory and we give you praise. We exalt you on today, God. God, we thank you, Father, that we're able to be your citizens that you have called for in this time, during this hour. We give you glory and we give you praise. We speak healing. We speak blessings. We speak divine favor over the church body, God. God, we think that our church is standing strong for the things of you. We give you glory and we give you praise. We bless our leaders this morning. We thank you that we're able to walk and see clearly on all the things that you need us to do. We thank you in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Come on and say amen and type it in right there in the comments where you are at. Amen. We thank God and we know that we have an awesome team here that is on behind production and uh, providing you with a great service every Sunday. So um, Minister Ruth was going to be here this morning. But it's raining a little bit outside, but that's okay. It took a power out. She's going to be praising and singing right where she's at. We know that they've practiced, but guess what? We're still going to have a great time. Pastor Dad's coming back, and he's going to give us a couple of songs, and we're going to have a good time with that. Amen. Go ahead, Pastor Dad. Let's have fun. Well, amen. Praise God. Listen, y'all, I want you to help me sing this song. I know you know it. Don't let me sing it by myself. It repeats, and it repeats itself over and over, so you ought to get it in just a few minutes. But come on, y'all, let's praise God together. Lord, I praise you. See there? Just say that. Lord, I glorify your name. Help me say it. Lord, I praise you. Oh, yes, I do. Lord, I glorify your name. Come on, join in with me. Lord, 
I praise you. Oh, yeah. Lord, I glorify your name. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I praise you. Lord, I glorify your name. And if the sun says I won't rise, and dark clouds fill my skies, Lord, you know that I will always give you praise. And when trouble's on the way, I will always say that no matter come what may, I'll always give you praise. Come on, help me say it. Lord, I praise you. Yes, I do. Lord, I glorify your name. Help me say it, y'all. Lord, I praise you. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I glorify your name. And if the sun says I won't rise and dark clouds fill my skies, Lord, you know that I will always give you praise. And when trouble's on the way, I will always say, that no matter come what may, I'll always give you praise. Come on, shout it out. Lord, I praise you. Y'all sound mighty good out there. Come on, help me say it. Lord, I glorify your name. You sound mighty good. Lord, I praise you. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I glorify your name. And if the sun says I won't rise and dark clouds fill my skies, Lord, you know that I will always give you praise. And when trouble's on the way, yeah, I will always say that no matter what, what may, I'll always give you praise. Lord, oh my, come on, let's lift him up this morning. Come on, you say, Lord, I glorify your, come on, let's lift up Jesus, yeah, Lord. I praise you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, I glorify your name. Lord, I just want to tell you, you've been mighty good to me, Jesus. You've been mighty good to me, Jesus. And I just stopped by to say thank you, Lord. You woke me up this morning started me on my way, put breath in my body, and now I'm able to say, Lord, I give you praise. Lord, I give you praise. Oh, Lord, I give you praise. Thank you, Jesus. You've been so good. <laughs> You've been so good. Ha, glory to God. You've been so good. Lord, I want to give you praise. Yeah. Praise. Praise. Lord, we give you praise. We give your name the praise. Praise. Come on, shake your head. Yes. Hallelujah. 
Give God some praise. Hallelujah. Well, good morning, everybody, and praise the Lord. You know, during this time of the pandemic, we have a tendency to um, gripe and complain, be worried, stressed. But this is now the time that we're to give him praise. Hallelujah. Well, I just want to welcome everyone to our live streaming. Yes, we're here early this morning. And um, I just want to share with you, I know many of you are wondering, well, I wonder how Pastor and Miss B are doing or our pastors are doing. And I just want to let you know that we're strong in the Lord and the power of his might. We're encouraged. Uh, this week, I had an opportunity to get someone, get someone down. Uh, I had filled out all the application for the PPP loan, the payroll protection program. And I filled out the idle and I did it early. And I, you know how I am. I was just getting, you know, dot every I, cross every T, getting it all together. Then I got word from my banker who had been in communication with her. And she told us that the money had run out. And I just got, uh, uh, was just kind of getting kind of, down and frustrated because I'd done what I was told to do and did it on time and just thought that it just wasn't fair. And then the, the Holy Spirit just rose up inside of me and just began to say, you got breath in your body. You're alive. You got food on the table. You got a roof over your head. You have clothes on your back. You don't have any reason to be down. And you know, God is still in control. And so the banker called me back and she said, look, the next time the Congress is going back and they're going to ask for additional funds and, and uh, your application is already still uh, filled out. And hopefully at that time that, and so I'm just believing God that, you know, it's, it's just not about uh, AFFC and the workers, but I have 18 employees at IPA and I want to do what's right by them. And so God knows my heart. And so I'm just believing that this next go round that, you know, God will pull through. And even during this time, we're just going to continue to stay encouraged. I want you to be encouraged. I want you not to get down, but to just know that God is still in control. And uh, I just want to remind you that uh, throughout the week, we have different uh, um, Sunday school classes. I got to listen to a part of one this morning. The word of God is still going forth. And I would want to encourage you to zoom into these uh, classes uh, during this time. It's now time for us to get full of the Holy Ghost, full of the word of God right now. You put the, God, the word of God in you when you don't need it so that when you do need it, it will come out. Amen. So let's all, anytime there's teaching going on and you hear about it via Zoom, uh, please go ahead and, and uh, zoom in and get that word of God in you. You know, I'm doing a study on Tuesdays for our Tuesday uh, Bible study group that meets from 11 to 12. And I was doing a study of the males, uh, the kind of understanding the Hebrew cultures. And, you know, a male son at age 12, it's the father's responsibility to teach the children the word of God up until their age 12. And when they become 13, when they have their bar mitzvah, they become a man. But all the Jewish children, under age uh, 13, up to age 12, know the entire Bible. They have studied the word. So I just want to admonish our Gentiles, our Christians, while you're at home, teach your children the word of God. God is giving us this reset time, this reset moment to train our children in the fear and admonition of the Lord, to teach our children the word of God, so that when they go back to school and when they go back to college and when they go back to work, they'll have the word of God in them so strong that they'll be able to lead others to Christ. So use this time wisely. Amen. Amen. And I just want to thank, uh, thank all of you who are uh, giving comments. I see you, uh, JB and Sister Ruth and uh, Dr. Briggs and Sister Francis and Miss Carnes. Thank you so much, Miss Rosie. Uh, we're just uh, so excited about your joining us today. Well, at this time, I just want to remind you that uh, not to stop giving. Giving is our out of obedience to God's word. And the work of God is still moving on. 
So I just want to remind you, we're so grateful that many of you are continuing to tithe and give in offerings, and it's making a difference. AFFC is not going under. We're going over. God is blessing us uh, exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ask or think. And I just want to encourage you. That's how you get your blessing because you're blessed to be a blessing. But obey God in the area of tithes and offering. You can give on the rim and you can text to give at AFFC to 73256. It should be on your screen. And those of you who are coming by the church and putting it in the, the mailbox, we go by there and uh, we make the deposit to the bank. And I just want to encourage you. You know, I was so blessed for the from for one of our members that came by and he had gotten his stimulus check and he wanted to tithe on that. And he wanted uh, that day he wanted to do it. So we were just so grateful. We met with him and went ahead and make that made that deposit. And I just want to encourage you. Don't shrink back from doing what you know, what God has instructed us to do. Amen. Well, I know I could get a bit long winded and pastor has a word that he wants to give to us, but I, he's going to bless us with a, a special and I just want to, uh, let's encourage pastor. Maybe one day he'll be able to do a full concert. Many of you don't know that he was uh, a um, gospel uh, singer prior to pastor in the church and he has five CDs. And many of you don't even know that, but uh, all of his songs are anointed and he's gonna bless us with another one today before he gives us his message. So let's all just give a round of applause to our pastor, amen. Pastor Kenny. Amen, 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 praise God. Hallelujah. Let me tell y'all something, man. It's exciting. These days that we're living in right now, I know a lot of people are hurting, a lot of people are suffering, but I, I want you to know something. And, and uh, my message today uh, talks about how God needs us. I know we need him, but he needs us too. And I would, I'll be talking about that. I got so excited starting the service this morning. I just was ready to go right, right into the word. Glory to God. But, but anyway, I want to share this song with you. This song kind of lines up with a message that I'll be sharing with you in just a few moments. Just ordinary people God uses ordinary people He chooses People who are willing to do just what he commands. God chooses people who will give their all. No matter how small your all may seem to you, because little becomes much. When you place it in the master's hands, just ordinary people, God uses ordinary people. He chooses people who are willing to do Everything he commands, oh yes he does. God chooses people who will give their all. No matter how small your all may seem to you, because little becomes much when you place it in the Master's hands just like that little lad who gave Jesus all he had and the multitude was fed with the fish and the loaves of bread now what you have may not be much but when you yield it to the touch of the master's loving hands then you'll understand how your life could never be the same. Just ordinary people. 
God uses ordinary people. He chooses people just like you, just like you, who are willing to do what he commands. God uses people who will give their all. No matter how small your all may seem to you, because little becomes much when you place it in the Master's hands. Oh, little becomes much when you place it in the master's hands. Amen. Well, praise God. Hallelujah. Now we're ready to get into to the word. Let's make our confession. Let's say, this is my Bible. This is my Bible. God's, holy word. God's holy word. I believe it, I believe it. and I receive it. Therefore, Therefore, my life is filled with purpose. Filled with purpose. That, is, that is, to make God, to make God clear, and clear and visible to the world. To the world. In, Jesus name, in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Turn in your Bibles, please, to Mark chapter 11. Mark chapter 11. And I'll start reading at verse 1. The subject of our message today is to be needed by the master. I know that's a, that seems to be an odd saying that God would need us, but you're going to discover that he really does. And uh, you're going to discover what to do while you're being needed. Amen. Mark chapter 11, and I'll start reading at verse 1. When they approached Jerusalem at Beth, Bethphage and Bethany, Near the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and told them, Go into the village ahead of you. As soon as you enter it, you will find a coat tied there, on which no one has ever sat. Untie it and bring it to me. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Say, The Lord needs it and will send it back here right away. So they went and found a coat outside in the street, tied by a door. They untied it, and some of those standing there said to them, What are you doing untying the coat? They answered them just as Jesus had said, so they let them go. To be needed by the master. And this morning, I'm going to do a little different, do it a little differently. Today, I'm not just going to preach. I'm going to prophesy. I'm going to prophesy to you that this is the day of deliverance. Bondages are going to be broken. I mean, get grab, grab a hold of that. Captives are going to be set free. Captives, uh, captives are going to be untied. Prisoners are going to be set free. Today is your day. You can go ahead and confess that. In fact, in fact, go ahead and put it in the comment section. Today is my day. Satan power, Satan's power is going to be broken off of your life for good. Jesus said to the disciples, go into the town and when you see the coat tied up, untie it and bring it to me. Well. God is using me this morning as a disciple, as a disciple. And he sent me to untie you, just like that coat was untied. I'm not here to entertain you. I'm not here to be entertained. I'm on assignment this morning. Assignment, I'm on a mission to destroy the works of the devil. 1 John verses three, verse three, uh, chapter 3, verse 8. It says this, for this purpose, the son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. 
Satan is a trespasser. He has no rights or authority over your life. Everything Satan holds, he holds illegally. Jesus said, untie him and bring him to me. Then Jesus says, he goes on to say, expect opposition. Let me tell you something. You don't live this Christian life and not have some opposing factors in your life. Jesus says, expect opposition, expect resistance, expect confrontation. In other words, expect a fight. The devil never surrenders without a fight, y'all. But this is the point. When the master commands you to be untied, nothing can hold you. No devil is big enough to keep you bound. Jesus says, here is the reason you are to be untied. This is the reason that you untie that coat. This is the reason. The reason is I need him. And I just stopped by to tell somebody hiding out somewhere because of guilt and because of shame and feeling unwanted that the master needs you. I don't care where you've been or what you've done. You may have shot up or snorted a line in the bathroom a few minutes ago. In fact, you might be high right now. You may be a fornicator, a liar, an adulterer, homosexual, or lesbian. But the bottom line is Jesus needs you. He wants you. No, this message may not be for the, one, the people who think they're perfect, the ones who've never done anything wrong. But the truth be told, we are all X something. We're all bound by sin and Satan at one time or another in our lives. And Jesus set us free. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm speaking to ex-drug addicts, ex-liars, ex-fornicators, ex-alcoholics, ex-porn addicts. But Jesus came to set you free. And some of you are not ex yet. You're still bound by some things. But the good news is, if you're bound, Jesus Christ can set you free. Glory to God. Can I get a better amen than that? I'm here to tell somebody this morning, you're valuable. And you're vital to the plan and purpose of God. That's the message of the gospel. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever, that's you, that's me, that whosoever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Why would he do that if he didn't value you? Every single soul is valuable and vital to God. Go ahead and write that in the comment. Write, I'm valuable. Go ahead and write it in there. In fact, confess it out loud. Say, I'm valuable. I'm precious. Say, I'm important. 1 Peter 2 verse 9 puts it like this. But you are a chosen generation. When you're chosen, beloved, that means Jesus really wanted you. You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. Let me ask you a question. If you're a king's kid, why are you acting like a peasant? You're of a royal priesthood and holy nation. That means you've been set apart for God and for others. A peculiar people. When I first read that, I thought peculiar meant you're kind of strange, you're kind of weird. But that's not what it means. It means you're God's own special possession. That you should show, the, the verse goes on to say, that you should show the praises of him who has called you out of darkness. Jesus called you out. He called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Jesus paid the highest price that could have been paid when he gave, when, when he gave his life 
to redeem you back to himself. Say I'm vital. You know what vital means? It means urgently needed. It means indispensable. Yeah, I'm talking about you. It means essential. It means absolutely necessary, honey. It means crucial. And we've heard it said many times, and we may have said it about ourselves. God doesn't need me, but I sure need him. God can make it without me, but I sure can't make it without him. God can do it without me, but I can't do it without him. God is awesome, but I'm nobody trying to tell everybody about somebody who can save anybody. Okay, if you're a nobody, why would anybody want to listen to you? I mean, that's a, that's a nice song, has good words, sells a lot of CDs, but it's just not biblical. God is all powerful. This is what we say. God is all powerful, powerful, but we're weak and we're helpless. We're powerless. And I know this all sounds very humble. It sounds very spiritual, very self-denying, and it sounds very God-exalting, but there's only one problem. It's not biblical. You can't find that in the word. In fact, it's opposite of what the Bible tells us. You see, what this mindset does, it, 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 it separates us from God. It puts God and his power and his anointing outside of us. It puts God way up in heaven somewhere with his power and with his Glory sitting on his big throne, surrounded by all the angels. And here we are, down here on earth, weak and lowly and barely getting by, with one foot in the grave and one foot on a banana peel, just hoping to get a touch every now and then, just climbing higher mountains, trying to get home. Let me tell you, that's not scriptural either. That's not biblical either. God never called us to climb. He called us to speak to mountains. Amen? It may sound spiritual. It may sound humble. But it's not biblical. The Bible tells me that my body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. That God dwells in me. In fact, in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 16, it says this. For ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. You think you're not special, honey? You think you're not important to God? The word of God says that you are. You think God don't need you? The word of God says that he does. He didn't just call you up or text you or email you. He doesn't just drop by and visit every now and then. No. He is a permanent resident. We've got to see ourselves like God sees us. He walks through my feet. He touches through my hand. He speaks through my lips. When I show up, God shows up. When I get there, God gets there. The kingdom of God is not a place somewhere over the rainbow where I go when I die. The kingdom of God is is a very present tense reality. It's a present tense reality. And it's here now in me and in you if you've received the King of Kings into your life. Luke 17 verse 20 and 21 says it like this. The kingdom of God cometh not with observation. Neither shall they say, Look here or look there. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. 
It's not just for observation. Not like an earthly kingdom that uh, you can you can see with geographical boundaries. No. Instead, it begins with the work of God's Spirit in people's lives. Don't look for an institution or a program. We should look for what God is, is doing in people's heart. That's where the kingdom of God is. That means the authority and power of the kingdom lives on the inside of you. That's right. When I show up, the kingdom shows up. Romans 14 verse 17 says this, the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 9 says this, we are workers or laborers together with God. Notice it didn't say for God. No, it says with God. God has chosen to partner with us to bring in the harvest and establish the kingdom of God. Hey, look, I understand why God would use you or me to do anything. It's, I don't get it. But I don't have to get it. He chose to do it that way. God is spirit, we are flesh. He needs our hands to touch, our feet to walk, our lips to speak. He needs our flesh and we need his spirit. His spirit in us, the anointing in us, empowers us to be his witnesses. If your feet don't go, God doesn't go. If your hands don't reach out, God doesn't touch. If we don't open our mouths, God don't speak. Romans 10, 14 uh, through 15 says, How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they've not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? You say, there you go, Pastor. See, I, that, that kind of frees me up right there. I'm not a preacher. Let me tell you something. If you're born again, if you've trusted Jesus Christ into your heart, yes, you are. You are a preacher. The word preach means go tell. Gospel means good news. Go tell the good news. And if you're, if you're a true born believer, you should be telling the good news. That makes you a preacher. And how shall they preach? Except they be sent. You say, well, pastor, I don't think I've got the call. I haven't been sent. Yes, you have. If you're a believer, you've been sent. He told you that in Matthew chapter 28, verse 19. Go ye therefore into all the, nation, the, the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the, of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, look at here, I'm with you always, even until the end of the world. Jesus said in John 20, verse 21, as the Father has sent me, so send I you. We are here to continue the work that Jesus started. Stop thinking that God doesn't need you. He needs you. You're needed. The master has need of you. One of the greatest weapons Satan uses against the believer is to make us feel unnecessary. To make us feel undervalued. To make us feel inadequate. Some of you may be feeling that right, right now, but I came by to tell you, you don't have to feel like that any longer. That's not true. The devil's lying to you. But our text message from God today says that the master needs us. 2,000 years ago, God lived in a body of a Jew named Jesus. Today, he lives in the body of a person named Kenny, named Brenda, Name Lakeisha, name Melvin, name Shauna, name Brittany, name Chris, name Michael. I could go on and on. Whoever's born again, whoever's trusted Jesus Christ into their life, God chose to live in you. Through your body, God will manifest himself and reveal himself to the world. Don't go by how you feel. You may feel inadequate, 
But the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 3, verses 5 and 6, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything of ourselves, but our sufficiency, watch this, is in God, who has made us able ministers of the New Testament. Listen, you're able. Don't allow anybody to tell you anything different. You have weapons in your arsenal, such as the blood of Jesus, the name of Jesus, the word of God, and the power of the Holy Ghost. First of all, you're chosen. Ephesians 1 verse 4 says, according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Number two, you're anointed. In 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 21, it says, Now he which established us with you in Christ hath anointed us in God. Number three, you're appointed. 1 Thessalonians 5, 9 says, For God hath not appointed us to wrath. Aren't you glad? But let me tell you what he has appointed us to. To obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. Y'all repeat this after me. Say, I got the right stuff. Got the right stuff. I can't hear you. I got the right stuff. Say, God wants me on his team. God wants me on his team. Say, God needs me. God needs me. Say, nobody can do my job. Nobody can do my job. If you don't say it, it won't get said. If you don't do it, it won't get done. There are those who are waiting for your touch. And if you don't touch them, they won't get touched. You are the only Jesus some people will ever see. You're the only Bible some people will ever read. You have their healing. You have their deliverance. You have their miracle. You have their breakthrough. You have their answer, and his name is Jesus. We're quick to say to people, don't look at me. I can't help you. Just look to Jesus. Just look to Jesus. We're quick to say that. But that's not what Peter and John said in Acts chapter 3, verse 4. That's not what they said. They said to the lame man at the gate called Beautiful, they said, look on us. Because they knew Jesus lived in them. And they said, silver and gold have I none. But such as I have, give I thee in the name of Jesus. See, that's one of those arsenals. In the name of Jesus, rise and walk. Some of you this morning, you need to get up. You need to get busy. You need to rise up for the King of kings and Lord of lords because you are somebody. God did call you. He did appoint you. He did anoint you. You are anointed no matter what devil in hell says. You are anointed. 1 John 4, 4 says, greater is he who is in you. Watch this. Than he that's in the world. Greater is he that is in you than poverty or lack. Greater is he who is in you than drugs or alcohol. Greater is he who is in you than marital problems. Greater is he who is in you than witchcraft or sorcery. Greater is he who is in you than depression, fear, anxiety, or oppression. Greater is he who is in you than heart trouble, sugar diabetes, arthritis, cancer, kidney disease, liver problems. And yeah, here it is. The coronavirus. Let's make our confession. Come on. Let's say it together. Me and God, God we're a, we a team. Me and God, Me and God we're, partners. we're partners. Me and God, Me and God we're, awesome. we're awesome. Me and God, Me and God can, do the impossible. can do the impossible. Me and God, Me and God are unstoppable. Are unstoppable. Me and, Me and God are a threat to hell. Are a threat to hell. Let's say it a little differently. God in me, God in me is, a team. is a team. 
God in me. God in me. We're partners. We're partners. God in me. God in me. We're awesome. We're awesome. God in me. God in me. Can do the impossible. Can do the impossible. God in me. God in me. Are unstoppable. Are unstoppable. God in me. God in me. Is a threat to hell. Is a threat to it doesn't hell. matter what you're bound to today. I came by here in the name of Jesus to declare your liberty. I prophesy that you are free. The master needs you. I'm here by the authority of Jesus' name to break every chain that binds you. To set you free. There's power in the blood of Jesus. There's power in the blood to break every chain and destroy every yoke of bondage in your life. Satan's power is broken. Say it. Satan's power is broken over me. Say it. Satan's power is broken over me. Say, I'm not defeated anymore. I'm not defeated anymore. Say, I'm above I'm and not beneath. I'm above and not beneath. Say, I'm the head and not the tail. I'm the head and not the tail. Look, y'all, I'm just quoting what the Bible says about you. I'm quoting what God says about you. I'm quoting what Jesus died for, for you. So there's no reason. I dare you. How dare you see yourself any less than what God says about you? When you were created in his very image, it's a slap in his face. For you to see yourself as lowly and, and weak and insignificant, that's a slap in God's face when he created you in his image. Colossians 2.15 says, Jesus spoiled principalities and powers and made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in the cross. And I want to leave this with you. God did it. Jesus did it. The Holy Ghost did it. Because they need you. You need it. The master has need of you. My time is up. I thank you for yours. God bless you. Every head bowed and every eye closed. Perhaps there's someone here today who say, Pastor Kenny, I hadn't felt like that lately. I hadn't felt needed by anybody. I'm ashamed. I'm down on my luck. I'm hurting. And I hadn't felt like I was significant. But let me remind you of what Jesus said. I've chosen you. You're royalty to me. You're special to me. And perhaps someone listening to me right now and you're not saved, you don't know Jesus, you, you don't have a relationship with him, man. That's what it takes. <laughs> it takes a real relationship with God, man. Not this surface stuff. I'm not talking about religion. You gotta be kidding. Man, there's so many religions out there. I'm, not, I'm talking about a relationship, man, where you can know God. You can talk to him. And he can talk to you through his word. I want to encourage you. If, you. if you haven't trusted him, if you haven't invited him into your heart, do it now. I'm going to lead you in a prayer in just a second. So you can know without a shadow of a doubt that you're saved. Let's pray this prayer together. Say, dear Lord Jesus, dear Lord Jesus I know without you I'm lost. I, you I'm lost. I can't save myself. Come into my heart. Forgive me for my sin. Make me a new creature. Devil, get out of my life. I serve you no longer. Jesus is now my Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. In your name I pray. Amen. Well, God bless you today. I hope that word spoke to your heart. And uh, I want you to join in with me as we sing. I guess what's known as our theme song at AFFC. Come on, y'all help me sing it. God is so good. I hope you're being a witness where you are. Wherever you are, be a witness. Tell people about Jesus. Come on in, come on in to the kingdom of God. Come on in, oh. 
Give Jesus your heart. Come on in. You can have a brand new start. Here today, let Jesus have his way. Come on. Oh, oh, oh. Come on, y'all. Help me sing it now. Come on in to the kingdom of God. Come on. Come on. I see my Sheila secretary. Come on, sing it. Your heart. Come on. Come on. Marcus Hillary, sing it. Sing it loud. Here today. Jermaine Lewis, come on. Come on in. Come on, Sandra, sing it. Sing it loud. Throw your head back. Come on in. Oh. Give Jesus your. Come on, Diverney. Sing it. You can have a brand new star here today. Come on, Pamela Flo. Come on, sing out loud. Sing it from your heart. Come on, Ruthie Wood, sing it. Come on in. Vicki, I can see you throwing your head back and shaking. God, come on in. Oh, there's Miss Lorraine. Sing it, girl. Come on in. <laughs> come on, honey. You can have a brand new start. Here today, let Jesus have his way. Come on in. Rosie, I heard that note way over here. <clears throat> come on, Lisa Rogers. Come on, Pam Corn. I saw you. On, oh, my God, on Facebook. Man, y'all sound good. You ought to go on the road, I tell you. Come on in. You can have a brand new song. Jeremiah Jones, come on. Come on in. Come on, Miss Eula. Sing loud. Come on in. Come on in. Oh, come on. Come on, Jenna Do. Woo! To the, the kingdom. kingdom of God. Come on, Dr. Briggs, Come sing it loud. In. How about Tony Give Arrow? Jesus, Ta Tony Arrow. Hillary. You can have a brand new star here today. Antonio. God bless you, son. Come on, Kathy. Kathy Strusan. Come on. Sing it. Sing it, Miss Kathy. Uh oh. Melvin and Shauna. Go on. Go on with it. Oh, 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 here today, let Jesus have his way. Come on in. Here today. Come on, sister-in-law Liz. Break it down, break it down. Here today, let Jesus have his way. Come on in. Denise Taylor, howdy duty. Uh, come on, sing it, Denise. <laughs> oh, yeah. Come on in. Woo! Oh, yeah. Come on, Francine. Everybody say, Come, Come on, on in. in. Come, Come on. on in. Come on, Ruth, play. I know you're playing on that Come keyboard on right in. now if the, if the electricity's back on, right? Come on, Come on in. in. Come, Come on, Miss Martin. I know this is your favorite song. Come on. Come, Come on. on. Come on, come, come on, on, come on, come on, Freddie, come, come on, on in. in, come on in. in. He's here today. Let him have his way. Come on, Miss Sharon Francis. Come on, 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 Miss Demetria. Come on in, come on in. Here we go. Here today, let Jesus have his way. Come on. Daphne Pickens, come on. Here today, let Jesus have his way. Come on. Come on, Leisha. Shake your head. Man, y'all sound great. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Well, God bless you. Before we have our benediction, I want to just uh, uh, encourage us to make sure we acknowledge and recognize those who are uh, working in the hospitals, the, the medical teams that are working in the hospital as we go through this coronavirus. They are our true heroes nowadays, I'm telling you. Mm -hmm. They're walking in, it's just like a fireman 
while everybody else is running out of the fire, they're running in. And so we just uh, lift them up and continue to lift them up in your prayers, all those who are serving in those capacities, the first responders, those who are uh, bookkeeper, I mean, uh, uh, housekeepers, and, and those who are do, serving the food, the, the uh, cafeteria staff, and, and all those who are involved, those who are on the streets handing out food to people. Uh, y'all, we need to lift them up in prayer, and, and we are so thankful that they have volunteered their time to, uh, to veil themselves. And God will bless them, but we need to, to appreciate them as well. So if you, you know a nurse or a doctor, don't uh, hesitate to acknowledge them and, and just tell them thank you. Let's go to the Lord in our ben- benediction. And now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ rest, rule, and abide with each of us until we meet again. Let us all say amen. God amen. bless you.